Am I good? Rosemary, we good? Gary, we good? Where's your American flag? Donnie? Huh? Right here? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. It's higher. It's, mm -hmm. We tried to put ours up there, but it, it was hitting the roof, so. Yes, sir, I'm ready. Okay, all right. All right, everybody, I'd like to welcome you to the Victor Board. Today's date is Tuesday, February 28, 2023. The time is 3.35. Uh, we are currently at the VFW post 3227 at 915 New York Avenue, St. Cloud, Florida, 34769. Uh, I just want to thank you all for coming to our February Board. Um, I want to welcome Chaplain Donald Warren up here for the invocation. Good afternoon, if we could all please stand and respect. Blessed Lord Jesus and wonderful Father, we ask you to put your hand of protection and guidance upon this board as they go forth to do their will upon the situations that laid out before them. They make the right decisions at the right time. We ask that you honor these decisions, Lord, for your will. Bless the people involved. Bless those who be doing various activities. For your glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As you all please remain standing, please address the flag. We pledge allegiance at this time. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Thank you. All right. Thank you again. Um, we're going to move on to the uh, We Salute You. Um, but first, before we do the We Salute You, I'd like to just read a uh, the biography of Sergeant Major Albert Ramos, Jr., U.S. Army Special Force Regiment. Sergeant Major Albert Ramos, Jr. was born in Miami, Florida, and was drafted to the United States Army in 1960 in Miami, Florida. Upon completion of basic combat training in Fort Benning, Albert became his career as a radio operator assigned to Fort Bragg, North Carolina, as a draftee. Albert chose to attend the Special Force Basic Course graduating in 1962. Albert re-enlisted and went to Korea as a radio operator. Two years later, he re-enlisted again and went to Germany as a radio operator. In 1966, Albert was reassigned to Fort Bragg, North Carolina and re reclassed as a demolition engineer. He joined the 7th Special Force Group Airborne serving as a radio operator. Albert later was deployed to Vietnam with 5th Special Force Group. When he returned back, he was reassigned back to the 7th Special Force Group. After attending the Special Forces Operation and Intelligence Course in 1976 in Fort Bragg, North Carolina, and Fort Halliburton, Maryland, he continued his assignment to the 7th Special Force Group, serving as Team Sergeant and Operations Sergeant at the company levels. After holding that position for several years, Albert was selected for Sergeant Major and was reassigned to the 10th Special Force Group where he served as Company Sergeant Major. Albert ultimately completed his career as the Company Sergeant Major for Bravo Company 2nd Battalion, 10th Special Force Group. He served 28 out of his 30 years with multiple Special Forces groups. He participated in many missions and assignments all over the world. Albert's military education includes all non-commissioned officer education schools, the basic airborne jump master course, mountain warfare school, special force ops, and intel course, special force advanced intelligence school, heavy weapons school, advanced first aid school, mountain climbing school, alpine skiing school, winter warfare school, desert training school, Korean language school, combat diver and combat diver supervisor school. After Albert's military service, he continued serving veterans as a veteran benefit counselor with the Veterans Affair in Miami, Florida. Albert is a lifetime member of the Special Force Association, Veterans of Foreign Wars, and Paralyzed Veterans of America. Sergeant Major Albert Ramos, Jr., thank you so much for your service. 
I would like to welcome Sheriff Marcus Lopez up to the podium, please, sir. first on patrol, and I'll tell a story, you guys have heard it before, um, sometimes we had arrest veterans. Um, this has nothing to do with it, but uh, domestic violence or any other type of issue, sometimes they just weren't fully there. Um, when you're transported to the jail, they'd say, hey, this is what I get for serving my country. And I say, you know what, I did too, I didn't act like that, I hold you to a higher standard. I was pretty rough being young and not realizing there was some deeper PTSD type issues going on there, because I wasn't really... The agency didn't have the CIT training. Uh, we didn't recognize these type of things. It was just taboo, especially amongst law enforcement. The first thing they do is take your badge, so we stayed away from that. Um, then, you know, at times a veteran would call three or four days later and say, hey, I'm still out of my house. Um, I'm sleeping outside. I'm wet. I'm on a park bench. I don't have, I don't have nothing. And I say, hey, sorry, buddy. You, know, you picked your poison. Wait for your court date. 30, 45 days. And it's pretty cruel and ruthless. But that's our mentality sometimes, because really I couldn't do anything for them. I'm bound by a judge and an injunction. I mean, do I take money out of my pocket? Do I make a collection? But then as I got a little, things started sinking and saying, this doesn't seem right, you know. We've got to do something more for the veterans. Um, and I started educating myself a little bit, and I started getting older and wiser. So I said, if I ever became sheriff, I'm definitely going to do a veterans outreach. Um, you know, it's something brand new. There's no other sheriffs that have it. And even though we don't get one or two people that show up here, um, it's still better than none. And we have found homeless veterans. Uh, we, and then one thing that we like to do too is honor our veterans and salute them and let them know we appreciate them for everything they've done, especially from our sheriff's office, uh, for your sacrifices. And that's why we do the veteran suits. And I, I got this from uh, my friend Rick. You know, we started doing veteran salutes with a private organization. And I said, man, this would be a great program to bring on board for our vet resident uh, veterans in Osceola County. So that's what we do. So we're trying to reach those veterans. We're trying to help them through Veterans Court. We're trying to help them through uh, you know, mental health type issues. Uh, or even you know, if, if a veteran shows up today and needs help getting online or getting some veteran benefits, you know, we got people that can do that. And that's the whole purpose of this. If we help one veteran a week or one a month, you know, we help somebody that sacrificed everything for us. And that's a little bit I can do um, for, for the residents of Osceola County. So with that, I'm going to salute you. Attention. We salute you, sir. Thank you for your service. Coin. It's our veterans coin. It's original. I think they have Space Force on this too, right? Yeah. yeah. No. So you even get Space Force? No, yeah. it has all the. It has all the. It doesn't have Space Force? Well, yeah, it does. Right here. Yeah, you even get oh, Space yeah, Force. Yeah, no, okay. it's all the wood all the way around yeah. the coin. And then you get your. Take a quick picture. Well, sir, I'm, I'm glad that uh, you're doing what you're doing. Uh, that was not the case back in the old days, no? especially when I came back from, uh, from the war in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, they told us not to wear the uniform because people were spitting on you and doing things to you that we didn't deserve. And I'm glad that things are changing now, and I'm glad you're doing what you're doing. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. And I'm also a veteran, too, so yeah. I served. And I think that's what makes it more personal. Glad that things are going in the way that they're supposed to be going. Right. And we need veteran volunteers, so feel free to sign up. Want to take a picture with him? Yeah. 
Now we'll move on to the uh, call to order. Chairman Hector Rodriguez. Good afternoon. I am Chairman Hector Rodriguez. Today is Tuesday, February 28, 2023. And the time is 1545. This meeting of the Veteran Initiated Change through an organized response board will now come to order. Move to roll call, Deputy Four. Will you please call roll call? Yes, sir. Hector Rodriguez, Chairman. Here. Here. Nicholas Amen, Vice Chair. Rosemary Morales. Here. Dr. Luane Johnson. Armando Perez. Gary Spear. Present. Helen Dottie Adams. Present. All right. And we'll go ahead and move on to approval of minutes. I'll now turn the floor back over to you, Mr. Chairman, for the approval of the minutes from our January meeting. We have provided each member of the board with copies of the January meeting minutes. Just confirm that you guys have those copies. Yes, sir. Okay. Has everyone have a chance to review the minutes? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Motion to approve the minutes. Second. Okay. Motion passed. Okay. okay. All right. Housekeeping. We'll go ahead and revisit meeting date scheduling. If I remember right, we were talking about dates. And I think we wanted to confirm that. So that was just housekeeping for the next meeting. I think we're going to do it back at the sheriff's office. Um, so we just needed to uh, make sure we were good with the next date. Correct. Do you have any floating dates in the, in the calendar? <sighs> no, I think I'm just trying to remember with the last meeting we talked about. Maybe I think everybody was okay with the March dates, correct? They were okay with the March the March meeting? I, I sent in the dates that I was not available. Okay. 
I'm fine with March 28th. March what? March 28th? I'm fine. I just want to make sure we're, we're going to go to March 28th and we're still doing the 3.30. My birthday's the day before. So. Day before? So. Okay, cool. We can have another cake. <laughs> I'll bring my own cake. <laughs> <laughs> March 28th, yes, 3.30, main sheriff's office. Excellent. So, all right, and then old business. Uh, that'll make it, so I'll turn the floor back over to you, Chairman Hector Rodriguez, to go over the old business. Before we move too far along, can we go to old, old business? I think that's what we're on right now. We yeah. should be on old business right now. I'm talking about old, old business. Oh, business old, that old? was not covered in the last meeting because of the okay. way the meeting went. All right. Yeah, let's, uh, if Chairman's okay with that, if you want sure. to go over the old, old well, so we're going to go back to uh, December? Several, anyway. several meetings ago, I was... I said that I would meet with Michelle, who's in charge of Veterans Court. Okay. And I was ready to speak to that last meeting and didn't get a chance to. I have met with her. Um, she pointed out a couple of contacts that I might want to get a hold of. I wanted to run them by the board for approval. Okay. One is the transition house, which is here in, in um, St. Cloud. St. Cloud. Yes. The other is the VSO that's located on Vine Street in Kissimmee. The other is the DVOP Career Service Consulate. And he gave me, she gave me names and phone numbers and with the permission of the board, I would like to meet with those people to see what we can do for them and what they can do for us. Well, <clears throat> that sounds excellent. Uh, I would like to have at least Part of the board and myself present when we make any contact like this, we we have everybody on, on the same page, uh, so we don't have to repeat the uh, 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 repeat repeat the, the the visit, so we understand what they are what they have to offer. So uh, if anyone would like to uh, uh, be a part of those meetings, be part of the of, of the meetings, so. Uh, I'm available if you could set it up uh, and uh, give us a day on the, uh, for the next meeting uh, and uh, that will be you know appreciated okay yeah and we can I mean we can reach out to those people and see if maybe they want to come to a centralized location whether it be the sheriff's office or whatever because obviously whatever they have to offer would benefit us as well right yeah. um, helping you know so the transition house is amazing yeah. Um, they serve, uh, they come to the Seeds of Hope meeting here in St. Cloud. I don't know if you guys are aware of that. The Seeds of Hope is community-based. Over 30 churches and outreach community partners get together once a month. And um, they, they discuss what they can offer the community and we start networking like crazy. But the Transition Center just had a new hire. Um, Scott, who used to run the veteran program, is no longer. There's a new gentleman getting on board now. Melissa is the CEO of Transition House. They're lovely. And just to give you all, all um, heads up, uh, we may be having an office with my nonprofit there working with Paula Starks' help. Mm. We'll know tonight. She's going to announce. We've had a discussion. We want to start like a veteran center, a one-stop shop here in Osceola County. Right. And so I think with this board's help and everybody getting on board at the same time, but the start point will be at the transition house. Mm. So they're going to give us free office space. Oh, so nice. they are very community oriented and they have 40 beds reserved for veterans. The rest is for civilian care. But And they are a nationwide organization. Right. So it's wonderful. So please set up a meeting and let us know. We could probably get a tour of the whole facility and learn what they do. Okay. And if anybody has food, please drop it off at Transition House, no matter what time, day or night, because they are always hungry over there. Hmm. 
Yeah, the only bad thing is that they don't take in women veterans. I've called right. them to um, see if they wanted donations for stuff I had for women, and they said no, they don't. Yeah, it's a huge need here in this community, um, and that's something I think that once we get to new business, I'd like to kind of address a little bit, right. like doing a project, once a quarter project on a major need in our community. And maybe that's something we can look at after we visit the transition house. How can we help women or veterans with children mm -hmm. that are homeless or struggling? Mm -hmm. Okay, the other thing Michelle and I talked about was she's going to dust off the mentorship program that was in Osceola County several, I guess several years ago now. And what that is, it's, a, it's through the, the Veterans Court, and they look for a veteran who can mentor mm -hmm. a veteran that is going through the process of dealing with the court. There's, she said, it it typically is a thirty to sixty day commitment. It they discourage giving that veteran any money or anything. It's just giving that veteran support and, and understanding. She was gonna dust off those, that program and send it to me and I was gonna make copies of it and distribute it to the board so that they could see what that's about. And she was looking for, if it's a female veteran, mm -hmm. a, a female veteran, preferably in the same service as that veteran or a male veteran, preferably in the same service as that veteran, to take them through this 30 to 60 day process that they go through. So that's something else I'm working on with Michelle. Did you ask her if we could do it as a combined effort? Um, like um, they give us one veteran um, each time, but for the combined board. So let's say if they're a female, me and Dottie could work on it. And if it's a male, um, you guys can work on it. So. Um, they have like kind of like a little team or like you know so if I'm not available that is available oh that's a good idea and, and I'm sure she'd do that I'm, I'm gonna get back to her about dusting off the program sure and when I do I'll ask her that mm -hmm. okay. um, I have a question please Gary when is Veterans Court and are we allowed to go maybe another outing to learn more about Veterans Court as a group well there's not much to to learn, it's it's veterans that get into trouble. They have, they have the. They can either go through veterans court or, or they can go in front of a judge. Okay. Veterans court tries to help them down the road. They have to do unannounced drug tests, and they have to show that they're they're committed to their program. And after. 30 to 60 days, typically, if they do everything they're supposed to do, then they graduate from the, from the, um, from the program. <coughs> but they can't have any, some people get in trouble and they, they break your car windows. Sure, sure. They have to reimburse you for your losses, and that's part of what the Veterans Court looks at. So. It's a process. I once I had this mentorship down. Michelle told me when I met with her that she would be more than, more than willing to meet with the board, sure. you know, as as a speaker. That would be great. Probably in the next couple of months. That she's got all that done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And. Um, is there a way to get Calvin Soto involved or whatever, the clerk of court, to get him involved with the veterans court and the board so that we can get maybe more documentation and um, kind of like resources? Because like every time, like I, I know I get notified every time a veteran gets arrested, but there's not a whole lot of follow up after that. So if there's a way to you know kind of like what is the end result what happens after the fact and maybe with you dusting off that program that there will be more communication on our end because it's like we always know what happens when they get there right we just don't know what happens after the fact mm -hmm. you know what I mean so maybe there's something 
that we can um, you know get docket information you know so that we can keep current with uh, the veterans moving through our veterans court and you know what the outcome is I guess well so, there's there's typically at least two deputies that are are in the courtroom all the time yeah so but when I talk next with Michelle I'll ask her about that maybe that's something she can address when she addresses the board okay yeah that'd be cool all righty is that the end is was that the last of the old old business mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned yes sir. all right anything else okay unfinished business um, in the last meeting we talked about a couple of items that we would like to see uh, 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 done and uh, also uh, an addendum to our uh, policy with regard of the uh, absence uh, there was a, a, a stipulation that Johnson uh, made a uh, reference to uh, and I believe it was adding a word to uh, remind me anyone with with would you be like an excused absence with with the uh, with the absence there have to be uh, a warning issue with regard of, of not being present uh, before moving into removal uh, the person from the board I, th I think what you're talking about chairman is that he didn't want just somebody arbitrarily removed from the board he wanted a, a due process oh okay so like a letter support. pretty much stating well, yeah well in in the, the bylaws yeah it's, it's, it says that the person shall remove from the board by missing or not attending the meeting but it should be a close where he says that there should be a warning before that uh, take into effect. Well, I think, well, I think what needs to be kind of understood across the board is that it's really, I mean, the sheriff is notified when board members are missing and the sheriff asks, you know, were they excused or were they unexcused? Because, mm -hmm. right, as of today, let's just say Dr. Johnson, for some reason, he didn't show up today, no email, no text message, no call. So that, that was today. That's today. So that's an unexcused absence, right? Armando excused. Um, Chief Amons, he's excused due to surgery yesterday. Armando had obviously a scheduled obligation or whatever and um, stated to the board that he was going to be missing this one but not the next one. Right. Um, Chief Ames said that he'd be out for two weeks, so I'm assuming he will make the March 28th board. Um, so I think when it comes to unexcused absence, I think once it hits the percentage mark of missing board meetings, the sheriff is notified, and I don't think the sheriff is going to send a warning message. I think he's just going to be like, well, you're obviously not wanting to come to the meeting, so right. you're being removed. And that's that's his right, right? Because it's his board. So right. I think that's ultimately what's going to... I think a board member is going to know when they're about to get... Right. Because they're not showing up. But it should not be addressed at this level, at the board uh, level, before we made a reference to move to uh, termination from the board? Well, I mean, I think it's... I mean, you're... The board is excusing some of these absences, but let's just say right now Dr. Johnson's unexcused. That's one, and that's been documented because okay. everything's being documented. So we we'll just, as a board, you guys agree that that's an unexcused absence. So, Chair, Mr. Chair, I think the board should make that decision. It's in our policy, in our, in our right? Mm -hmm. And so if the, if the sheriff, you missed 25 percent, guess what? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Simple, right? Keep it simple. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think last month when we were discussing, there were two. When I walked away from the meeting, there were two distinct issues: the absence issue mm -hmm. and termination, and corn. Those are two separate issues. Mm -hmm. So I think if we split those apart a little bit mm -hmm. and discuss each, but I. I am of the opinion that it's in writing right here. You mm -hmm. miss twenty five percent, the sheriff's going to get you gone. Okay. It's simple. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I think the 25% is to give you leeway for excused absence because things do come up. But, you know, if, you're, if you have a 50% excused absence, and that means that you don't have the time and commitment for the board. Yeah, and I think that that could be a letter that the board drafts, everybody signs it, 
and then that gets forwarded on to the sheriff and then the sheriff can look at it and be like well i see where they're coming from even though it's been excused and like you said 50 percent he obviously doesn't have time for the board and we're trying to get this board moving in a forward progress to where we're helping the community not Correct. you know talking about what we're going to do we're going to do it so yes yes mr yes. chair um thank you uh the second part of the confusion that i think we need to kind of address a little bit on record is the issue of quorum right so right now as it stands it's four members one of which has to be the chair or the vice chair present mm -hmm. in order to run a meeting right. and, and do business. So if there were four people present, say hypothetically the chair and the vice chair are not present, we cannot hold a meeting if there are four of us members, but we're majority, right? So what I'm suggesting that you might consider and take into consideration is make a letter to the sheriff that says, hey, if there are four members present, chair and vice chair are absent, the four that are present can elect a pro tem chair mm -hmm. so they can run a meeting and do business so that we right. don't have to wait for the next meeting. Well, I... Or do a the, vote after in the, the last In the last, uh, two meetings ago, we decided that I'm just a chair. I don't have any voting uh, in, the, in, the, in the board when it comes to making a motion. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so right now we with three, yeah. we don't have a quorum. Right now oh. we are in You're right. I forgot about Remember that. Remember that? Yes. So they I was removed, thinking about that. It was that the last earlier. thing that they they removed him. Yeah, they yeah. said that he didn't count in the numbers. What happened was we wanted to bring an additional board member that was never called back uh, when we selected Dottie and the other gentleman that was uh, the second in the uh, at the uh, at the, the VA hospital. VA yeah. Police. I forgot his name. Uh, we didn't have a chance to address this yeah. uh, topic on the last meeting because of the time uh, constraint. Yep. But uh, uh, can you please add him or send him a, a message uh, that uh, he's that we would like him to uh, join the board? Because we all decided that uh, that he was also a good candidate to have on the board. It was acceptable. And, oh, yeah. but the other sheriff said that we couldn't because of the numbers. Yeah, cool. I think it was. I think it fell under the yeah. all seeing organization through the boards in the state of Florida. Yeah, so he I said think, and then I think that's another. why they talked about removing you as a voting party. But I don't think we ever did that. Are they removing him as a voting party because he's the tiebreaker of a seven board panel? Correct. Correct. One. That's why they're removing you so that you can. Yeah, that's what we agree. So that you can break it. Yeah, but we haven't done that yet. Huh? We haven't done that yet. No. You're still a voting member. Oh. Yeah, yeah okay. you're still a voting member as of now. That's why we still have a quorum, because mm -hmm. you haven't been removed right. as a voting member to make it so that we can bring on that additional person. You know, the confusion is by uh, Ben leaving. Because yeah, yeah. I think we were- You coming in, you know, kind of crash landing. Yeah. It's where we kind of uh, miss the, uh, you know, the, the, yeah. the point. So, I mean, it, it, we can keep it how it is. I mean, I don't know. I think they were going to look into that. To, yeah, I think, I think they the were sheriff actually... said that they, even though the board wanted it, he said that they, uh, he talked to them about it. Yeah, he'd have to talk to We'd have to legal. Legal said that they, we couldn't do it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I, I mean, I agree. We I mean, all I've wanted heard, it. Yeah, yeah I heard about the other candidate. individual, and he sounded like a really good candidate. So, ah. yeah. Um, but well, at least we have to let him know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I'm, yeah. he can still be present, yeah. he, even though he doesn't. He's an alternate, isn't he? Yeah, he can still sit in here and be mm -hmm. part of the board. In case we have a no show, he could. Maybe. I don't know. That's a good question. Uh -huh. I'm going to add that. Yeah, if he's an alternate. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's been if he's through in, the training. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd have to make another shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the business car. Yes. We're, we're, that it. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Where are we with the pro tem in case yeah. in case the chair or the, and the vice chair are not present? Where are we at with? Are we going to move forward with that? Is it is it dead? Oh, What's he has the, to talk to legal. About oh, that. I have to. Yeah, I have to find out if that's even a thing where we could where you guys could 
you know, maybe vote amongst the four of you and mm -hmm. make somebody a temporary sit-in chair okay. or whatever. That's, yeah, I mean, I'll, it's going to be in the next minutes, and I'll go ahead and get with legal and see okay. if that's a possibility so it doesn't violate any of our board rules. While we're talking about the SOP, the SOP does need to be changed because of Dottie. Because of Dottie? Yeah. I can't wear dresses anymore, but... <laughs> Be because the original board all started at the same time oh. and, and we all have the same start date start date and, and length of service mm. there, there should be something in there that says you're, from your start date it's two years rather than from December yeah. I think it's December mm -hmm. 31 31st. your start date starts there her start date is nine months after that, so there should be an adjustment to to be subparagraph one that says it's from your start date for two years. If that yes. makes sense, if you okay. look at the yeah, we can, ESOP, uh, it's yeah, it, and I think that we we talked about B. that because we want some continuity, <coughs> so it's not like everybody's leaving at the yeah. same time and new yeah. board at once. No, we we'll cover that in the last meeting. We talked about it, yeah. but, but, we, I, but it needs I to be changed. I don't think it, yeah, I think it got kind of, yeah. yeah, yeah, it got overlooked. So we'll make sure it makes it into these minutes. I will cover that. Yeah, we talked about it when we did interviews. That's when we talked about that, mm -hmm. that, yeah, that we was, want some continuity. You're right. You're right. Okay. I will, uh, we'll bring that up as well. Any, any other business? Can you, uh, Deputy Ford, uh, can you give us an update with the regard of the uh, the business card uh, and the letter for donations? Yes, we, we approved the letter for donations last meeting. Uh -huh. You guys all signed off on it? Right. right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So all I need to do is if you guys have somebody that's willing to do donations, you just ask me and I can forward you that donation letter to your email and you can print it out and have them fill it out. Yeah. yeah. So it's, I mean, it's been approved. It's, yeah, it's in our files. Yeah, um, so whenever you're ready start. to receive donations, we can go ahead and just start knocking on people's yep, door. I'll, I mean, I'll send you, I'll send you the letters. I'll send everybody a letter um, to your email so you have it on hand. Um, and yeah, that will we'll go that. specifically into the Victor Board sub account. Right? It goes right into the 501c3, yes. Labeled as the Victor Board funds. Thank you. The memo is July 19th, 2022. Um, I did want to talk about that. There, there's no place in the memo, and I, I really didn't think about this till after the fact. Um, an old wise man once said, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. So if I go to a meeting at the local VFW and I, I talk about the Victor board and they say, we want to write you a check, who do, who do we make the check payable to? This doesn't give you that option to, I mean, I, I understand not accepting cars and boats and, you know, things like that. <laughs> but if, if I've got, the cat in the hand, this says, well, I've got to tell you to go contact somebody in, in the outreach services section. There's nothing here that says, I can say, okay, you don't write the check to the victory board, you write the check to whoever the check needs to be written to. Yeah, it would so just the, be written probably to the, also the county sheriff's office, and then at the memo of the, the check, you just put victor board. Because I, I think it's important that we have a vehicle for the, you know, I've got you, Dottie. You want to give me $100? You've got to put it in the form of a check. And yeah. they got to get a receipt because yeah. it's tax deductible. Yeah. Well, this says that you'll get a receipt. Okay. Yeah, you'll get, yeah, you'll get a receipt. I just wonder if there's something we can do to add that, that's all. To add it, like who to make the check out yes. to? Yeah. Would you email us the... The request letter. Yeah, the request so, letter, yeah. and then say who, and then just separate. Okay. Not necessarily as the rule, but as to the <clears throat> something that's good, and it's going to come up. It, it already has come up with me with another 
committee that I sit on. Okay. All right, that works. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. So <clears throat> March 11 is coming the community outreach. Community yeah. outreach. Uh, the donation that we're trying to raise is for the purchase of the of the no. shirts. Oh no. Um, yeah. Let me go ahead. And, let me cover that. Um, that was uh, just the possibility. Um, see what what can be done, and it was probably a little premature. So. Um, for the initial investment into the fundraiser t-shirts for the Victor board, um, the sheriff's office already approved to use the, uh, the unclaimed funds account, mm -hmm. went ahead and donated money to the Victor board okay. account and got those shirts covered. Um, we were also able to save money by going through um, um, a different vendor. Right. Um, so we got them obviously quite a bit cheaper. Um, and then the polo shirts, those are also taken care of. The um, property from the sheriff's office donated the 511 tactical shirts, and then, um, and then the unclaimed funds got approved to pay for the embroidery. So they should be done by the community outreach day. So I should have the shirts by the 10th. So if we want to try and I can wash them for you or whatever, or if, you know, if we want to try and meet up before the community outreach so I can get you your shirt, we can, uh, I can just send you guys an email or call you and sizes. say, hey, meet here. Because I already got your sizes. Well, except for, I don't think I heard back from Dr. Johnson, but I kind of just looked at his stature and <laughs> picked him a shirt. So. Yes. Um, I also wanted to add that I, I said that I would bring some items. Yes. Um, so I'm just fronting the items. Um, so I'm making them and then see if we sell something. Um, and I sent him kind of some of the things I made, but if you guys have any ideas with some stuff that you want um, at the resource fair, I'm probably gonna make a couple mugs, a couple tumblers, and uh, it's just gonna have the same logo that's on the shirts and the board logo, and that's it. Um, and see if we could get any money like that. And then I talked to him about in the future about making shirts. Um, I'm gonna bring some shirts next week so you guys can look at it and then so in the future if we have to use our money I can make the shirts so I can make them really cheap and then I could like I can I can make just for that event mm. we don't have to do a hundred shirt right. order you know I could just make 20 or something for some event that we're going to to save us money mm. until we get kind of going um, and actually get donation money to use in the future um, so, any suggestions of things that you would like to see, just let me know. Um, and uh, next board meeting, I'm going to bring some stuff so you guys can look at. Um, I talked to him about bringing like, light colored stuff, like a white polo um, with our logo. So, since I, do, I don't do embroidery, I do the light pressing. pressing. So, I could actually put the whole logo. So, our polos are not going to have our complete logo because they can't embroider everything. Uh, so yeah. it's just like the... Deputy Ford, excuse me. Yes. Is the new vendor going to be able to do the patches for our logo <coughs> for the polo shirts? Yes. That, that. So it will have our logo. Oh, okay. Yeah, they so can't the... embroider, but this one vendor does a special different project. I use it for my own nonprofit, and it's exact. No, so I told them I do DTF. Oh, okay. I do okay. sublimation and DTF. Sublimation. But he... Sublimation. That's it. Okay. Yeah. I, do, I have a sublimation printer, and yeah. I could do DTF as well. But he said that the polos are embroidery. Yeah, the, the polos are embroidery. She did the embroidery for your polos. Did okay. the, the actual... They just, she couldn't do like the branches of service above our logo. So the polos are not DTF. Okay. No, they're so going to, yeah, they'll be embroidery a... with your name on one side, the oh, um, the Victor logo on another, and then the little American flag that we all So the on. next board meeting, I'll bring some sublimation Examples. and DTF so you guys could kind of see the difference. The sublimation can only be done on light colored, so white is best always usually. Um, and the summer's coming, so, you know, we'll probably want some lighter colors anyways for the summer. So, I'll bring some of that, and then the resource fair, I'm going to probably make a couple mugs, tumblers, and any other ideas that you guys have, I could make it for March 11th. Thank you, Rosemary. Do, nice. Chairman, I have a question for yes. you. For the outreach fair, are we handing out any 
pamphlets or little brochures about what we do, where we are, that's what a I calendar want. of events that's coming up for us. We need to hand something out to the community, yeah. right? As that's why before, we're there. <laughs> yeah, I saw that, that it said uh, that you were asking for a pamphlet using the Victor logo. And, and develop a mission statement. So I think we're waiting so on a mission statement. Do we got any input from the board from the, since the last meeting? No one su submitted anything? I've never sum I haven't seen a mission statement. But I, the only thing I, I have here is a, that Dr. Johnson said leave no soldier behind. I would say leave no veteran behind. But All right. So, How about no veteran and family behind? Yeah. yeah, family, yeah. yeah. All right. So... Um, yeah, I mean, if you guys get me a logo, then I can work with the SO Media and we can... Uh, you know, we can put together a pamphlet and with a, you know, maybe put a QR code on there that provides some resources. The QR code, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm down. I just, I just need some, some emails. Yeah. Well, if you tell me what you guys want, I'm, I'm, I could design it. Uh, so I think it's good to have the dates, uh, our meeting dates. Yep. Um, that QR code. Um, what do we do for the community? I, that. That is the biggest question yeah. that um, when well, people will talk to me, they go, well, what does the board do? What do you do for the community? <clears throat> we were supposed to, originally was to advise the sheriff when you had an arrest mm -hmm. with an inmate. Yes. Uh, with a veteran, sorry, with a veteran. Yeah. And inform the, the sheriff the type of services that are available for that service member. Yeah. Uh, especially when they enter into the veterans court and providing that the veterans court complete the, 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 the requirement for the court and they get a final disposition on the case uh, and said the veteran is homeless and uh, we could link up with the VA with the resources that we have with uh, Transition uh, Vice President uh, <coughs> uh, uh, Amin and uh, get him a voucher or get him, get him situated where he, he doesn't have to be out there in the street. Uh, that's what, one of the things that we Originally, was the idea of having the veterans, uh, the the veterans board, mm -hmm. okay? So we could provide this guidance and also working with uh, the veterans uh, court. Uh, so we need to get with veterans court. That's what. So we that need. What we're saying I mean, is that we need to focus on meeting with those people yeah. that Gary was talking about, and then focus on helping veterans that have been arrested. And then seeing why they got arrested, obviously, exactly. and then seeing if we can help them, because a lot of obviously veterans that get arrested are not always from Osceola County. Well, like the other if day, if he's arrested asked, in the county, well, he's ours, no? Well, not, not technically. It's, if he's from Volusia County, he's going to go back to Volusia County after, eventually. After yeah. he's final deposition. Yeah. After well, he's going to bond out, and he'll go back to Volusia County, and then he'll come back here for his mm. court hearing. So it's not. Technically, it wouldn't be an Osceola thing. Right. Yes, he committed a crime here in Osceola, but he wouldn't be like uh, a homeless person or it would be a domestic violence individual from Osceola County. So it's not like we would be, you know, okay. help, helping him. Now, Soldier's Angel, have anyone heard about Soldier's Angel? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Soldier's Angel is a nonprofit that worked with the VA and they do, they do food drive in Orlando for veterans, especially for veterans. Uh, and they're always looking for volunteers. Uh, I have reached out to them in the past uh, to see if I could bring those resources to Osceola County yeah. and we could pro provide the manpower so we could uh, uh, basically supply mm -hmm. uh, the transition house mm -hmm. uh, with uh, uh, food. food. food uh, that's one of the things that we uh, could do in the future as, as part of us getting a pantry, a food pantry. Do we, I know space is very limited in the service office, but how can we set up a food pantry in the service office for this type of, you know, canned food, especially? Well, we can, um, Close. We, can, we can fundraise money and get a trailer, or maybe get a trailer donated, like a, like a mobile uh, well, trailer. Second Harbor. Huh? Second Harbor. Yeah. And then no, just but we have other pastors that, that get, that was looking for, a site to uh, do the food drive, mm. and uh, I, I have contact with them. But the thing is, can we keep an emergency closet with clothes? Uh, I don't know, help me out with. I, I can help you with that. Yeah. So I can only speak of St. Cloud. I know what's here because mm. I attend the meetings. 
Seeds of Hope is your best resource. Mm -hmm. I would like to bring you to the next meeting, right. Mr. Chairman, so you can see what they've done and all the resources in this community. Mm -hmm. Then maybe we can duplicate that in Kissimmee and in Poinciata so that we can have big hubs. Because here we have multiple food pantries. We have daily service of um, breakfast at one of the churches. There's a lot of resources here right. that I can hook you up with for St. Cloud. St. Cloud. But we need to cover Osceola the whole county. county. Yeah. So yeah. let's let introduce you to what we have and maybe the Seeds of Hope. They're looking to expand into Kissimmee next. Maybe this is a group project that we can right. all get behind and help them with that. Because right. what I have experienced with homeless veterans immediately, no shelter, I take them to the VA and this is what I get. It's a process. It's going to take a few weeks. And there's to get no them. direct line. And there's no direct line. Exactly. And I, I was told by one um, homeless coordinator to take them to Brevard County. And I said, that's not acceptable. So we are seeing more and more homeless. Transition house, it's an appointment. It's a application. There's process. We can't just get somebody off the street like tonight. No, you can't. And that's problematic. Well, the thing us. is, if we have funds that we could supply this veteran with a two or three night, you know. Well, that's something that's within our power, which me and Ford talked about. Like, you just, if you know a veteran, say Joe is on the streets, I, I moved to approve $200 exactly. to fund his housing for a week at the $200 for those weekly. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we have within our power, but we have to have the funds to do we it. We have to have the funds. Let's and we only meet once a month. Yeah. So we need to be able to get together online and make a vote. Hey, this, this just happened. We this talked about happened. that too before that we would Opening up a line of communication between, between all the boards. I think that we should identify business owners along 192 on St. Cloud that have a hotel. A motel. And they say, listen, we are. We would like to partner with you, uh, and the money is guaranteed that we want to pay for the stay. Or maybe they just want to donate nights. And or they want to donate. You, know, you have a homeless with a family, yeah. you know, with little ones. Oh, uh, that's a good idea. Just like, oh, we'll pay for three nights, but you, you, give us a comp one or two nights. Yeah, or something. Or something. You know, there's sure a lot of issues here in St. Cloud. We'll discuss offline yeah. so that I can bring you up to speed of what's going on in the heartbeat of St. Cloud. Right. And like I said, Seeds of Hope is tremendous. And Where, they have where a, they're located? They, they meet once a month. When is their month. next meeting? Um, I will tell you. So then that's something that that's something that we can do as board members. Yes, we have our main board yeah. every month, but, but if there's have... other meetings elsewhere, we can put our Victor shirts on yeah. and attend these meetings and, yeah. and bring awareness to the Victor board. Absolutely. And as, as and more that we have, <laughs> it's a good magazine. So Maybe. And the more we, uh, the more we, uh, veteran organization yeah, they meeting. Meet, they meet at the, so there's uh, a meeting. Meet, I used to go to that There's one. multiple meetings happening, businesses. Um, there's um, multiple, like, Where do you get all the dates meetings. and stuff for I'll, that? I'll put together something and forward it to you so okay. that you can disseminate. How's that? Of all yeah, because there is a lot. Meetings. But you guys have all your, e I mean, you guys have each other's yeah. emails. and Yeah, but I don't want no? to yeah. just send it to you. I think so that we, we have, have to communicate. <laughs> Yeah. From what I understand, yeah, I was about to say they said that we can no only say, talk about it here. No collusion, no right? Collusion. Well, so yeah, I mean, but yes, that means in reference to this, but I meant like we still have to do things outside of the Yeah, meeting. we could say, hey, do you want to go to this organization's yeah. meeting? And we could send that to you. I was going to say, we never get anything done if we don't. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, and, and having that part that is missing, um, you know, using social media like uh, an app, what's up, or that could be in the same. Yeah. Uh, not, not discussing any board meeting business. Right, but resources in the community. But resources, resources. to help resources. veterans. But that's we can. Yeah. We can say, hey, I'm going to this meeting on that would March just send a text 5th. Message and, Who and, can make it? And I'm going. You are welcome to come. Who could come with yeah, me? Like an or I can't make it. Can you yeah. make it? Can anybody yeah. make yeah. it? So, um, yeah. That's uh, it's completely legal because we're not talking about the board business. Why? We're talking about something related to veterans, another yeah. veteran organization. So I'll send out a resource to all of you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Of all the meetings that I attend to that deal with specific issues. So right. Easy. Done. Okay. So. We're good with the shirts. We're good with the 
Uh, we need to come up with a, with a mission statement like ASAP yep. for March 11. Uh, today is Tuesday. Let's see if we could get something uh, we could brainstorm and, you know, nothing fancy, just a couple of lines uh, for uh, March 11. Well, we need it way before March 11th, right, for printing. Right. We've got to have it printed. So when's the deadline you need this by? Uh, I would like to have it by Friday, okay. the deadline. By the 3rd. Yeah. And then we email it to yeah. Douglas. And you're wanting me to print out all the pamphlets? Or go to that vendor. They do that also. Oh, the, I they told her to have it by the 11th. She's probably going yeah, no. to no, but Yeah, I think that for this, this yeah. meet, this is too short notice yeah. because with the mission statement, we have to vote on that, and that's yeah. official business. So yeah. I, I think that we could have something simple that has like our meeting dates. Um, yeah, I could probably put something together that just says yeah. like the Victor yeah. board, the here. numbers, BA, yeah. No, yeah. numbers of the BA, yeah. you see the hotline, the, the QR new, code, the uh, QR code call? for the BA, crisis numbers at eight eight eight. Nine eight eight. Yeah. Well, that's the good thing about that QR code from the VA it's is it all. has everything. Every you have crisis, every abuse. Yeah. Yeah. That would all. be perfect. Yeah. And I think, um, Mr. Diego, you can can you take a QR code off that card mm -hmm. and put it onto a pamphlet? Yeah. Okay. So we'll. Yeah, okay. we'll do that for us just so that we can print that out and have that at the next and we'll laminate it or something so people want to just take pictures or yeah. whatever. Okay. Perfect. Okay, let's move right on here. I do have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, so you were talking about the checks. What about how are we accepting payments at this resource fair? We could, I mean, for you the could items do, that you, we have. I mean, you can do cash. You can do... I mean, a lot of people don't have cash nowadays, so I just wonder: Are, are we going to have? Credit card. Are we going to have some way of them mm. giving funds to the Sell? sheriff? Uh, yeah, but that Zell is to your personal. I mean, I well, can't. I don't know. Good so question. I just thought about that. I mean, how we're selling shirts. What are they? Is it cash only? I mean, that's I mean, really typically hard. It's cash. I it's think it would be cash, cash only. only. Yeah, it's tip, yeah, because we we just did the Special Olympics at Tippecop, and it was all cash only because we didn't. Okay. Right. Yeah. So I mean, um, yeah, we don't have an ATM machine at the sheriff's office, but I'm just saying, <laughs> I mean, we can, <laughs> you know, <laughs> maybe that'd be okay. a good idea. Okay, moving right along, um, the home hometown heroes banners that that's still floating somewhere out here. Yeah, I think you we know. were still you, yeah. uh, we were still waiting for feedback on the board. Remember, we gave the whole list of them, and then you guys were supposed to pick the top five or something like that. that but we vo we voted already, didn't we? No, no, no. Oh, I thought no. it was a not the banner. banner. Not the no, not the no. hometown banner. The hometown thing. banner. The the the. the. And what are, and, and what are we using that for? Because I think well, the idea was, was to have. I spoke to the mayor of Casino <coughs> and have or, him or God, Gonzalez, and that she got me in contact with one of her folks. And she's, she agreed that uh, the city will uh, give us a permit to hunt the, the, uh, the, bat, uh, the, the batters. Yeah. But, you know, we need to identify the batterments. And I think that um, uh, we still have some time, I believe, uh, but it's cutting it close for this year. Yeah. Uh, because something like this, they need to put it in the calendar at least six months to a year before that. So I don't think we will. So where, where are we this at with this? At? You're right, right. Yeah. So there's a lot of programs across the nation that do this. Mm -hmm. When I was up at North, I saw tons of it. Right. So, um, and what happens is the family member of the veteran mm -hmm. usually pays for the banner. That's how they've got it set up. Right. Not that the city would pay for that. No, it's the, the city would supply the, uh, the manpower to hunt to the, the banner. It. Yeah. To hang it. Uh, and we also discussed this a couple of months back that the family member could which is to identify their, their veteran, they could cover the cause. Yeah. Uh, but uh, that's the least of our worries right now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. So let's table that. Yes, yeah, we table that. Uh, so for the next meeting, could we have it on the screen so we could just vote on at the meeting? That's what I thought. I thought that's what we agreed to. I thought that's what yes, we agreed that's to. That's what I thought. So yeah, if, I mean, well, that's why we said the top five so we didn't have to put 18 banners up if somebody could just say oh i like two six seven nine ten or whatever yes. and then that gets sent to me in an email and then so if somebody a couple of you guys have the same numbers that you both agree on top five then we so can you guys move those. did email that 
I didn't I get that. Yeah, I think that was talked about at the last. Yeah, it was. I, yeah. I so how about we just send an email? Hey, pick <coughs> your top three, and then we email you back with our top three, and then have the results at the next board meeting. Yeah, because it says it right here. Mr. Spear asked where they stand with the hometown heroes banner. Does the sheriff's office have a printer? Sergeant Nichols advised the hometown banner program website has 18 options and asked whether they would like to narrow down to five options. Mr. Raymond asked that be emailed to them so that they can choose the top five. Yeah, so it was supposed to be emailed to us, but we didn't. I didn't well, I mean, I, it's just the hometown banner website. Just the, oh, I, I mean, I think I guess yeah, just probably so just send you the, the, like, the URL. Like for instance, Yeah, because if you, yeah, because if, I guess if you send me your votes, then. Where do you go to see these 18 names? Yeah, I think it's better if you just send us the direct link of, okay. this is the 18. This is the 18, option yeah. 18, so, okay. To make sure we're all on the same page. Yes. All right. Okay. December, uh, I believe that um, Ms. Morales suggested that we should have, that uh, would like to have, uh, December meeting canceled for December? Oh, we already have it canceled, right? Yeah, I think you guys voted to cancel it. Cancel? Yeah, okay. Yep. It wasn't around the schedule, actually. Yeah, it wasn't on the schedule. It wasn't on the It was It was another date that we were going to... Halloween. Halloween. And then we're all supposed to review the, the calendar and, and then come up send with any yeah. dates that we weren't available to Deputy Ford so that we could talk about the dates when people weren't available. That's the way that was addressed in, in the last meeting. In fact, I addressed that in the beginning of the meeting, I think. Oh, it's on it's there, Jay. including Halloween, it's on there. Yeah, it's, it's J on our last yeah, J. minutes. Yeah, J. Twenty five percent of the meeting. We've covered this already. Yeah, that was all. Okay. Good. So are are we gonna be getting an email of the dates where we can address to you, I guess? That, that was supposed that was already supposed to happen. Yeah, but it hasn't happened. So I, I sent in my dates. Did you send in yours? Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah, I think I think the only one that sent me dates was, was Mr. Gary. Okay. All right, right, so let's move to the new business real quick. Mm -hmm. um, um, advertising the uh, Australia Gazette. That's the thing that we spoke about. We brought it up yes. at the last meeting. And I want to apologize <coughs> to the board and everyone here. I had a death in my family, so that okay. became the last thing on my mind. Mm -hmm. So I will now back in the swing of things, I will reach out this week mm -hmm. and let you guys all know what the outcome of that is. Okay. The social media, Diego, uh, Deputy Ford, uh, creating a Instagram account, a Facebook account, just for the Veterans Board, under the sheriff, uh, or it should be just anything that is regard, uh, regarding with the sheriff should be plugged into the official sheriff page. You mean like creating like Are a... we on the wrong agenda? No, new business? New something? business. Number new seven? Business. New business I have here. PTSD program. This one? No, this is from the that was from January thirty first. January thirty first meeting. Oh, we're going. Okay. Yeah. So the thing is, <clears throat> I, I don't know how can we work this out getting the the Instagram uh, under the sheriff. Anything that has happened in the department should be used. Yeah, he has. I mean, obviously, he has his social media. And anything that the Victor board, let's just say we want to put something out, right? It would be put out underneath his social media platform. Okay. That's already because we already have like on the website, you know, we already have the drop down for the Victor board. Uh -huh. that you can find that's how you find our like past meetings and stuff like that. Yeah. So, but yeah, like what Miss Dottie's got on her phone right now. And thank you for updating it. Oh, you're um, welcome. Yep. So it looks great. Ah. Shows the last meeting, but it's not tied to the sheriff's Facebook page or anything with the sheriff's. It's just the Victor board with on um, the osceolosheriffs.org. Yeah, That's it's where. usually, I mean, usually if like we have a notable, let's just say a notable meeting, mm -hmm. like with the last one we had, you know, Miss Pat mm -hmm. Rudd. Yeah. That was something that was shared 
on the actual page itself, but obviously Generally. we don't we don't want to share every meeting on the Facebook page. Okay. Um, just to be cautious of time, we spent an hour already on old from January's agenda, you know, so for the future, I think that we can't be focusing that long on a previous month's agenda. Yeah. Well, we have well, the agenda that uh, uh, Mrs. So we Spiro haven't wrote. even started on this month's agenda, and we've been in the meeting already. Well, for no, I think we covered, we covered, some. yeah, we covered some old business from this agenda, right? We covered yeah, we talked about all the, the way through the 25 statement. percentile. We covered the... the but banner. we're going through every single item from last month's yeah, from agenda, last. and I think that's just way too time consuming to be going every month we can't go over every single item of last month well the thing is there was a lot of finished business on, and that's what the reason why i decided to go by because it's a lot of the stuff that we discussed was never done or never materialized okay so let's see yes yeah that 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 <clears throat> okay Is there any public comments? Uh, uh, we haven't even gone over new business in the this month's agenda. Well, that's, that's what here, we're, sir, we're on the February agenda. You were on January's. We're, yeah, we're trying to get on number seven, right? New business. No, but that's just seven. Number, number seven? seven. That's for January. This is for January's. January thirty first. Yeah, that's January's agenda. Oh. January. That's, that's minutes for January. Yeah. So where's? So we're not. We have. That's what I'm saying. We've just spent over an hour on January's mi minutes. Old business. Yes. Old business. Oh, okay. Okay. Because, yeah. Yeah. And so we have not tackled new business. We have. This, this is agenda. the new agenda yeah, for yeah, this yeah, month. Yeah. We haven't even started. Correct. So that's what I'm saying. It's. Well, maybe the meeting should be a little longer. Yeah, an hour. <laughs> this is you know, not maybe an hour is not cutting it. Yeah. Um, okay, so go ahead and. Oh. Is there anything that you need to cover, Mr. Chairman, that's still left on your list? So let's move on to the February 28th new business. Okay. Okay. So we already review all business. Yep. Uh, so, <coughs> new business. Uh, PTSD program for the veteran at my yeah, so research. Yes. yes. Carlton, um, his truck broke down on the way here, so I'll talk to you guys about it. So, the PTSD program at McCormick Research Institute, um, I went to their open house mm -hmm. um, last week, and it was really great. Um, so, pretty much, it's a 12 week program of PTSD horse therapy. And you have your own horse. Each veteran has their own horse. And throughout, you are doing a combination of therapy in class and also um, time with the horse. Um, this program is for veterans, um, mostly with PTSD. Um, and this program is completely free, not through the VA, but they're working on trying to get in with the VA. So um, it's right here down the street. So they're trying to get the word out to more veterans for them to know about the program. Completely free, 12 weeks, um, mm -hmm. once a week. Um, they offer it on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, three hours. Um, and they've had a lot of success with their program and so um, they're working on um, actually um, being certified to be with the VA but um, most of the people that were there at the open house they found out about it through the VA so the VA is setting them over they're just not officially with mm -hmm. the VA yeah. okay. um, one of the things I wanted to add thank you for all that information is the fact that it's for post 9-11 veterans right. because of the way that the grant is structured. I, I spoke with Carlton, I lived around the corner, and, and he says he's in the same boat as me, right? I want equestrian therapy for PTSD, and, and I said, how does this work? 
And he said, we have to approach our legislators to change the law wording. We want to give 9-11 veterans preference, of course, right? Mm -hmm. And then if there's any space availability, open it up to other veterans access. Right. And that's what they're trying to work Yeah, on. and I want to tell you that um, they, they have a lot of open spots. Right. Um, I personally went with a non-post-9-11 vet, and if that veteran wanted to, they could have gone through. Um, they attended the open house and they had plenty of spots. Um, so, what's the I, address to this place that does the equestrian? Um, Rummel Road. 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 Is it Rummel? So, okay. I would yeah, say I if they're not post 9 11, to still go to the open house mm -hmm. because meet them because the, okay. they will yeah. most likely still take you. Yeah, they're um, fabulous. So, I personally am going through the program now and they were still taking spots, so they weren't I'll full. Check them out. Stinky Yeah. No. And, it, and clean. it's super clean. No, they, that you place. Off the floor. <laughs> no, no, no. That place is like spot <laughs> clean. And we were like so impressed. And it was like, oh, we have a Marine running it. So it's super clean. That place is really nice. Um, okay. okay. But I would say if they're not post 9 11, to not be discouraged, still Good. attend the open house. Mm -hmm. I mean, the open. Um, and they'll, they'll most likely still take you. Perfect. Good to know. Because they still were looking for I'll a lot of out. people for this class that just started, what, like a week or two ago. I'll check it out. Awesome. Nice. Excellent. Um, a tentative date that, that I was going to put out in an email um, later on is March 25th. Um, it's a Saturday. Um, there's a place called First Nature Ranch, and we're trying to put something together for veterans within the sheriff's office, veterans and their families. So it's kind of like an appreciation day, kind of like a hangout. Um, and uh, maybe if we can have, you know, our, our board members there and maybe some resources and maybe just chit chat and mm -hmm. hang out, whatever. I think there's gonna, I'm gonna try and put together like a cornhole tournament, some other cool stuff to get some buy-in. It's hard to get sheriff veterans so how him. are you going to be able to tell veterans about it in such a, like... It's for the Sheriff's Department. Oh, it's for, it's oh, for the Sheriff's Department. Oh, I thought you said public. Yeah, yeah. Oh. So we have like 90 veterans that work at the Sheriff's oh, Office. Oh, it's only for so, veterans. Yeah. So, I, yeah, what I do is just I have an email group and I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. I think it's a great start. Mm -hmm. great, especially yeah. if we um, honor the families, yeah. too. Because, you know, I was an Army brat, and I love running my dad's tanks and my mom being honored, and mm -hmm. that was something very special for the family members, yeah. you know. So we're def so. Yeah, we're definitely going to bring them out there, and, yeah, and having awesome. you all there would be would be really nice. So um, just put it in there. We're working on it. Um, I'm definitely, um, Diego and myself, we're working on pamphlets to try and get that out um, via email. It's not going to sure. be like a paper one. It'll be an email. So we'll get working on that. I just wanted to give you guys that date. And do you have a time or no? Uh, it's going to be around lunchtime. I'm lunchtime. thinking like yeah, 12 to like 3.30. There's going to be food and everything, probably steaks and stuff. Sweet. So. Excellent. Mr. Chair, before we close, can I add one more thing? Yes, ma'am. Um, I would like the board to consider before the next meeting this concept. Just, just a concept for a second. Um, if this board could pick a community project that we could do once a quarter, that would be fantastic on how we change the face. At the end of the year, we could look back and say, man, every quarter we did something to help veterans and their families in our community. Some project. Yeah. So do you want to do the project or do you want to like volunteer for somebody else's? Nope. I want, us, I want it to come from us, right? And say, hey, this is, this is kind of our thing. You know, we've got the Veterans Court, we've got a couple other things. You know, let's kind of brainstorm offline and maybe come with a couple ideas for next month and then kick it off the following month as a board project. Yeah, for and we can, and, and, and we also. And I think what he brought up is a good project to start, maybe doing a, a food driver, food something related. And this month's project is the outreach on the 11th the community right. thing where the board members are going. So we can count that one as a win, right? Yeah. The, the board is out in the community. That's fantastic. And we can bring guys. our resources that we have yeah. to our table. That's going to be at the community yeah. outreach event. And we can talk to people. And there will probably be sheriff veterans and stuff there. And 
Um, we can also pick an individual within the community that we focus on, somebody that needs our help, because I remember talking to yeah. you yeah. about, like... Uh, you said uh, that there was a veteran yes. that needed help, actually. Yeah, and um, elderly services who also filled out a request to talk to us. Nice. cards so I will bring them up here in a little so, bit. So uh, can you explain that to me? I didn't know about that. What? How, um, how do you do that request? Um, oh, this is just the Victor Board request for input form. So anybody that is wishing to have comments to the boards, so let's say we have a bunch of people here, they fill out these cards and they hand them to oh. Curly's and then they kind of like authorize them. They have three minutes to okay. talk interrupted to you, uninterrupted to you guys yeah. about what's going on. So. Um, and we so do, did he fill that out at the last meeting or this? No, he just filled it out right there. Oh, Mr. Tom, nice. Mr. Tom Rios Mr. with Tom. our elderly, he's our elderly service officer. Nice. So he's, uh, if, I mean, if you guys are done and yeah. you want yeah. me to bring him up here, he would love to talk to you. Um, I, I have a question about that card. Can we put that on our Victor Board uh, website so that if people in the community have a comment, they, they can, can like email, email it, email it yeah. to you? Yeah. So that it can be brought up at the board. Yeah. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. I don't see why idea. this is, yeah. And have those cards at the outreach when yep. we do the outreach. Yeah, that's if a they have idea. comments, hey, okay. next board meeting, bring it. <clears throat> yeah, come on up, Mr. Chair. Let's stop at the Home Depot here in St. Cloud. Yeah. And speak to the manager to see if you could give us a grant of, let's say that we need to do a little uh, landscaping for a veteran, an elderly veteran. Yeah. Or they need some, you know, yeah. minor repairs of the spring Well, that's door. what this veteran needs that he's going to talk oh, about. Right. See what he's got to say. Yeah. Yeah. I can't, but I can't mention the name. I forget. The oh. scenario, just the scenario. All right. How 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 are you? <laughs> uh, my name is Tom Reels from Mosa County Sheriff's Office. Like he said, I'm an Elder Services Officer, and I've been dealing um, also with veterans. Uh, we work together actually in the same unit and outreach, and we actually work together with this individual and um, for the past two days already who is a veteran. Um, unfortunately, as a veteran, um, years ago, uh, years ago, a couple years ago, they actually had him as a um, proclaimed dead through the veterans. So, um, so you can imagine, so we were able to finally get him, his benefits and everything else. He's, he's going through a lot of issues right now, not only between that, other marital issues and a bunch of stuff, but now he's by himself, he's on a wheelchair, he's a war, Saigon, right? Uh, Saipan. Saipan. Yeah. So World War II. So, um, so he's going through a lot of issues. Um, but the wife, you know, it's it's sad because the the wife doesn't know what benefits are out there. There's a lot of benefits for females or the wives and spouses, which they don't know. And I think I spoke to uh, Hector also a little bit about it as well. But it's, it's, it, so we get to tap into other resources. And I'm glad that, I know Dottie's part of our outreach forum, and that's one of the areas that I want to get into. We have agencies in this county that come to the forum. I want to utilize that forum greatly also with the Victor Board, mm -hmm. because I believe together we can accomplish a lot and there's more coming. Senior Resource Alliance is actually going to be speaking. So there's a lot of things that we can tap into. You said a pastor. I know uh, Pastor Fonseca, who has the biggest um, pretty pantry. much food pantry in Osceola yeah. County. He he's already has the only contract. He's um, on our board as well, too. He just started uh, last one. So, um, so we're connected already. So we can tap on. So we're not, how are we saying, um, trying to open up something else That's right. when we already have the connection through the Olson County Sheriff. And this is one of the things the Sheriff want. He wanted that connection so we're able to have it not only for the officers, for our veterans, and for the agency to help each other on cases. So I believe we're able to tap into that, not only that, to do community events, to be able to have them there for our community events, to be able to help them there for the veterans. So we have that one-on-one -on -one connection. Our Dottie's part of it, and she's been there for a while already. And that's how she learned about this here. So, um, but again, I believe we're able to tap into those resources and um, instead of duplicating. Yeah. So therefore, let's tap into it um, because we have all the agencies, almost all of them, 
So let's utilize them for the veterans. Because my son's a veteran too. So let's utilize it, you know, for the veterans. Let's try to get what we can to be able to meet their needs. And I think that with that, I'm going to bring up Gilberto during that forum so we can actually, part, but he's actually getting help right now. So they were able to, to connect with Adult Protective Services. What's his emergent help at this second? Well, right now it's uh, home care. Okay. Home care right now. And uh, because the situation. <laughs> he didn't want to go to the VA. Um, his wife, after 55 years, is yeah. no longer inside the house. He don't trust the VA because okay. of. Yeah. They think he's, they're going to keep him there. <laughs> he doesn't want to stay there. He likes his house. The VA's changed their mindset, though, and now it's trying to keep the veteran in the home. Oh, yeah. Yes. With caregiver programs. Yeah, it's hard to and I, and they're already that. working with that now because we figured out who the case team manager yeah. is, and they were able to get all that. We worked together with Adult Protective. We did a joint response. And, of course, he also helped yesterday. So we all together were able to um, provide that quickly because of that connection that we have through the outreach forum and everything else. So I think that's the way we're going to have to go about it. And I'm, you know, I'm hoping that we get even closer together to work together because I think we break that gap. Because instead of waiting one day, two day, three day, we're able to quickly respond, hey, this, I got this, let's take care of it now so we don't have a situation within a couple of hours and that may come worse. Yeah. So um, again. So um, has he already applied for the aid attendance? Or we already we that? already got we already were able to um, with the adult protective services we were able to get all the um, the help that he needs they already started sending everyone that he's he needs uh, including physical therapists everything is going right to his home so tomorrow everything actually starts so, so. what does he need from us now well that, I, I actually didn't come up for that part oh. so um, it's just something that that way you know that through our networking mm -hmm. through the outreach forum we were able to do that mm -hmm. and I think like and this is what I want to say as long as we use them together as you know is not the outreach forum is just not for the officer it's for all of us including the board so that way if you need them through the Olson County Sheriff's Office what Marcos Lopez wants is to be able to get that that outreach or that um, resource to be able to meet the needs of the community. Sure. Yeah. You need so. to create one phone call. Yeah. Yesterday we had to call multiple people and I sat on the phone for 50 minutes. The VA? Well, no, just uh, a lot of people. Yeah, we, I mean, well, you know, we, I had a home care business. It's, yeah. it's hard. It's difficult. Yeah. And that's like, how I met you. Yeah. 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 It's, it's hard because uh, they're either, they don't qualify or they don't have the money to pay for it. Yeah. And a lot of veterans just fall in that middle, you know, that they don't have money to pay out of pocket, but they don't qualify for the yeah. VA to pay for it. And, and that's, and that's your big issue. And then yeah. also some of them don't even know what team they're in. Right. Some of them don't even know their benefits that they qualify for or that they can argue their, their percentage Correct. later on. So it's, it's a lot of um, knowledge missing. And I think, and that's the part that we're lacking in the veteran section I can help you with that. and to the spouse section as well. I can help you with that. I see so. a lot of widows and that's not a good time to learn how to navigate the VA no. when your veteran is gone. And especially your that. age is 90, yeah, yeah, 80, yeah, 80, 90. I'm sorry. They don't even know technology. Yeah. Like, and someone mentioned that not too long ago in a couple of meetings yeah. in the past. They don't even understand technology. So therefore, how do you get this information yeah. to them? That's why we talked about the Osceola. Oh, the newspaper. Yeah. Putting yeah. it into the newspaper, right? And, and, but I think the, maybe doing a workshop, educating workshop for veterans and their spouses. Yes, Hosting and maybe that's where we can do the, we could start that out when we do the police one. Yeah. And bring maybe a workshop for the spouses to show them, hey, a little table or something saying, here's all the information that the, the spouse needs to know that if anything does happen or, or to one of the, police officers or deputies or whatever that this is a way and we can start there and then move out to the community at that point so that's a good quarterly project do a resource mini resource fair after the victor board or yeah. after a and we have it we're going to have it the community fair so all of our yeah. pretty much all the agencies are going to be there too yeah. so that from the forum so yeah. all right thank you i know more than three minutes so thank yeah, you sir <laughs> Um, 
Is there anybody else that you get any other cards? Oh, we're good. So he doesn't need any help with his house anymore that we talked about? <sighs> Um, no, I think you we got him. You told me like he needed some house repair or his house yeah, was falling apart. Yeah, we, um, we actually had people do a lot of repairs on the house. Okay. Hometown Heroes. Yeah, Hometown Heroes. Yep. So, um, but obviously there's more that so needs maybe to be we'll done. A little bit more help. Yeah, there needs to be, there's more. So, we're, so do we want to connect with Hometown Heroes or do we want to, um, what he said, for us to personally go to Home Depot ourselves? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. Can. I mean, we can. We can Two even... More. Jim Moore at Home Depot. He's a VFW member. He's one of the managers at Home Depot. Jim Moore. Jim Moore. Jim Moore. Jim okay. Moore. One of our buddies. He serves on the OCVC uh, council as honor guard color guard, and he works at Home Depot and has helped numerous veterans in the past. Okay. So Jim Moore. So, and if you're saying if we want to do landscaping, let's just say landscaping at a house, something that you made, is that something that that we're doing? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> what we do is we could have a, a group of veterans from the sheriff's office on a weekend, so we could do a. Oh, uh, I know who can help. Uh, the JROTC. Yeah, I was gonna say we have explorers. The younger people get them involved yeah. and helping veterans. That's a good way, right? I was in JROTC. I did a lot of landscaping in my day, and so <laughs> I'm yeah. too old for that. But oh. get the youth involved. Yep. Yeah. The the Civil Air Patrol, all those youth programs. Yeah. Right. We could definitely have some kids, and yeah. we have the explorers at the sheriff's yeah. office that explorers. we can. Yeah. Explorers are always Explorer good and stuff better. like that. Yeah. 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 I just, all right. Cool. So how do we go about um, reaching out to them? Like, hey, we need this. Is there a contact person? I know the JRTC people over at no, the Explorer. Oh, the Explorer? Yeah, we have, I mean, that's pretty much in our community oh, services. Okay, so we could just so, say, hey, we would like this veteran that needs help. Can you yeah, schedule yeah, yeah. this? Yeah, and then we can set it up with, it's usually probably best on weekends because, yeah. you know, because that's They got to do community service hours. Yeah, and they, I'm sure they would. Then, yeah. then, then we could get donate, the donation and if it's a pizza, big, yeah, and if burgers, it's a, yeah. you know, cold drinks. All right, folks, the next meeting is on the 28th. Yep. Is what is that? Five. Five o'clock. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Um, I did make a cake, so um, oh, anybody that wants cake. some cake, I'll yep. cut the cake.